Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. Jake Matera. Meow. <laughs> the meow boy. <laughs> Cal Donjala. How's What's up, buddy? Mike? Get the fuck out of that Sorry. right shit, dude. Hey, guys. How are you? <laughs> how are you, buddy? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm happy to be back here. Uh, we're saying all kinds of bad words already. <laughs> Not me. Ooh, you were laughing. <laughs> I don't remember what you said. Uh, I'll remind you. <laughs> remind me now. <laughs> you motherfucker. You didn't say anything that bad. Jake, turn off his microphone, please. I'm tired of him already. <laughs> John, can you see in the, the monitor the, the head behind you creeping out from the poster board? This side? <laughs> yeah, the head that you left behind here like a fucking ingrate. Whose fucking head is that? He brought it with him. <laughs> You're full of shit. I've been bringing it with me everywhere, man. Carpool <laughs> lane. <laughs> He sits at the bus stop like like Forrest Gump and offers it to people. <laughs> I only see the one head. Where's the other one? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't see your head. You really want me to take that out of here? No, I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I think I, it I belongs like it here. here. Yeah, yeah. It's also flattering too because that's a full head of hair in mine. My real hair is starting to thin, so <laughs> I like great. to pretend I'm looking in the mirror. Your neighbors are like, honey, he's watching us again. <laughs> I got to get like an animatronic arm. To Set that up like a mirror and comb your hair in front of it. <laughs> really freak your neighbors out. Oh, man. Guys, you know, you know I, I've been playing a lot with you guys lately on these last few episodes. Teasing you, making you close your eyes, doing fucked up shit. You're a fucking prankster. I like to consider myself a junior stinker. <laughs> like I'm nothing compared to these motherfuckers that we that we cover. And it's more of an impractical joker right here in the <laughs> yeah. beginning. Yeah, it's scary. All right, especially so when I have to close my eyes. That's all I want to hear, dude. But it's thrilling. Ah, uh, dude, I, that's also what I want to hear yeah. too. Titulating. <laughs> <laughs> I've never used that word before. I don't. It's gross. <laughs> Say it again. I don't know if you said it right. <laughs> Breathe heavy into the microphone and then say it. <laughs> Titulating. <laughs> that was pretty aggressively breathing. In oh, I like the way you use it. <laughs> so I, I realize I, I, I've been teasing you guys a lot. So if we're able to do a Stinkers episode tonight, because I never know whether or not we're going to do Stinkers or Practical Jokers. Right, no one ever knows so for sure. If we're going to do a Stinkers, I have a more pleasant surprise for you tonight. However, right. I, I think we should do the coin toss and find out yeah, whether or not yeah, we actually have a stinker that. episode. Get this thing rolling. All right. <sighs> Keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. Mirror, Q, Sal, and Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Redo. Fuck. I Heads. Had it was heads. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, in the spirit of full disclosure, this week was the most time that I spent researching potential um, impractical jokers related episodes. To be prepared for for if I won the toss, dude. I, John, I'm honestly preparing as though someday it will happen because I know eventually it will. <laughs> it has to the, mathematically, this can't keep statistically. Happening. Yes, this is. Um, the rubber band's going to snap one of these days. <laughs> and I hope it's right against my balls. And we're going to go full gatto mode on this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait, dude. So I, I really spent a lot of time this week looking into something. I don't know if it could necessitate an entire episode. Because I really don't think... There was something related to the high school where I think two of the guys went to the same high school. I think it was Brian Quinn and maybe Sal went to the same high school. Okay. And there was something fucked up that happened... To someone who went to the high school, his family went off the fucking edge one day. Really? Yeah. And the guy seems kind of funny, so I think I might have something to go with. However, it would be a a blending of the two worlds, dude. A I'm, stinkers related or a Joker related stinker. John, I'm in too deep. All right, <laughs> but I'm gonna keep going, and I, I truly think that I might be onto something good for you. All right. It, it, I don't know if I can find more information because it's been difficult to come by after this initial story popped. Well, I mean, their publicists are probably keeping this shit off the web, bro. I wouldn't doubt it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be having that kind of shit out there. Dude, we might have an impractical murderer. No way. Yeah, dude. What? Well, I know it ain't the fifth Joker, because that's Joey Fatone. Is it really? Yeah. Whoa, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, for everybody out there, Joey Fatone's the official sixth Joker. <laughs> fifth Joker. Yeah, he... I think it's from Staten Island. Joey Fatone? There are boys, yeah. 
Oh, they, okay, cool. They're boys from way back. You wow, just, that's fun. You just skipped over the Jost brother. Huh? The the what's his name? Colin. Colin, Jost? you Jost? Yeah. You think he's number five? You fucking idiot. He, yeah, he does all the <laughs> after Joker stuff. He's the sixth Joker. <laughs> Rob Emmer, Joker number seven. Oh man. You want me to keep going? <laughs> you want another <laughs> yeah, one? Yeah. Damn, dude. <laughs> yeah, give me another. He's going through the whole chain of command on you, dude. <laughs> yeah, that was a fucking powered dynamic change right there. John, I, I got to think that you fit in somewhere on that chain of command. Yeah? The hundredth Joker. Dude, what, what do they call it? Lone Survivor, the Kiefer Sutherland show? What, they should make one where, like, you're the you're the guy that gets fucking sequestered for the night, and they blow up, like, the entire Impractical <laughs> Joker studio, so you're the only Joker left. Oh, my God. It's like when Garth had to host Wayne's World by himself. <laughs> it's like, uh... <laughs> I guess the first one to laugh is the loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it looks like another Little Stinkers episode for us tonight. And boys, like I said, like I've been really fucking with you pretty harsh lately. I've shot you with a Nerf gun. <laughs> um, I presented you with severed heads. S- scared me. Uh, you fake poisoned us. I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did. I can't oh. even eat pie the same now. <laughs> Well, all right. Would he eat it with your left hand instead? (laughs) (laughs) Would you eat something that I made for you if I promised you it wasn't poison? It's just nothing's ever going to sound good if you put it like that. Would you eat something that I made for you? (laughs) If I promised it wasn't poison. I'll tell you what. I'll even take a bite of it, too, to show you that it's not. I know what you're going to fucking find, the piece that you didn't poison with. (laughs) You pick it. You feed it to me then. I'm a picky eater. I can't have my eyes closed on this. You don't have to close shit. <laughs> this ain't some eater. fear factor shit, is it? No. Some kind of dong. Uh, John, I genuinely made you something nice All right. that I think you're going to appreciate. That's relative picky. to our subject for the evening. I'm hung up on the picky eater thing. <laughs> Before we get started, Jake, can you throw me my phone because i got to oh, read yeah. you something off of there. Oh, man. I am a picky eater. What, mozzarella sticks? <laughs> yeah, there's no fucking <laughs> vegetables in that, dude. <laughs> All right, here we go. That's the definition of a picky eater. Chicken fingers, mozzarella sticks, french fries, carnival food exclusively. (laughs) (laughs) My house smells like fucking funnel cake 24 hours Uh, a day. I want to go to there. (laughs) All right, I changed my mind. I want you guys to close your eyes. (laughs) I can't take a bite of it with my eyes closed. All right, just... We'll just do it while I, I do the review. It'll be like, good. It'll right. be good radio though if I do. Yeah. Dude, I feel like a, a fat girl that's hesitant to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking close your eyes for five seconds, then you can stick it in, dude. All right? Fine. I thought uh, you were counting down. That's why I hurried up. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm breathing into the microphone. I can't see. My eyes are closed, everyone. <laughs> all right. So let me bring this up on my phone while I uh, try to explain to you oh, guys. God. So. Our subject for the evening oh Christ. is another bad bitch. Damn. And you know that I cannot help but fall in love with a bad bitch. Are you crazy for the bad bitches? Dude, this, this bad bitch had me within five minutes of finding out what I started to find out about her. Is this like a butthole-looking wow. cookie or something? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> we need like a bad bitch bell or something. I agree with you, Jake. So <laughs> <I'm having> <laughs> the Arby's bell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before I, I showed to you what I've made you, oh, I'm going to tell you smell. that our subject for the evening is the death house landlady, oh, Dorothy Puente. And you can now open your eyes so I can present to you what I've made for you. It's onion based, I think. It is. Oh. Is it an onion salad? No. this is Fruit salad with onion? This is Dorothy Puente's My Fiesta Mexican style fruit salsa. Okay. So she was uh, convicted of killing three people, probably killed at least nine. And uh, when she she was sentenced to life in prison, and while she was in prison, she hooked up with an author named Shane Bugby, and she wrote a book called Cooking with a Serial Killer. And it included about 50 recipes of shit that she loved making in the outside world. And this fruit sauce was one of the things that she really enjoyed making. What have we got in there? There are uh, mangoes, onions, apples, jalapenos, pears, garlic, cranberries, honey, orange... Lemon juice, a yellow onion, and red vinegar. I see some cilantro in there, too? No, what is What's that? What's that green stuff? Oh, that's uh, jalapenos. 
Ooh. So spicy. Are will you take a bite of this? You be doing it like pig pig trough style? No, dude. Whatever the <laughs> fuck you want to do, man. I'm, I'm, this is a I didn't know you had chips. I, I thought I was. Really, you guys feel like you're being tricked at some point. Like I legitimately got you something. So take a bite and give Jake some. Oh man. While I get in, get more into this. Are you happy you weren't shot or poisoned or? I'm still t- apprehensive. <laughs> now bear in mind, this is this is Dorothy Puente's recipe and not mine. This isn't your fruit salsa recipe, Mike. No, your famous fruit salsa. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Good. That's all I wanted to hear. Jake, you want to yeah, try some? Yeah, I mean, if it's yeah, if it's good. Dog, and I don't just it I don't good, dude. I don't just call any. Lady murderer, a bad bitch. She's a bad bitch for a lot of reasons. You want to know another reason why Dorothy Puente is a bad bitch? What is that? In addition to this incredible salsa, she made her own catsup. What? <laughs> what she... fucking century is this bitch from? <laughs> she Before was. they patented ketchup? <laughs> she was born January 9th, 1929. Damn. Okay. I think it's the same year my grandparents were born. Oh, wow. Maybe they know her. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if my mom was awake. Call her. Uh, y- yes, hello, Mrs. Del Calo. Uh, how was your catsup? Does she even make catsup, you fucking moron? <laughs> no, sorry. No? No, I'm just saying you're... Um, Why would you even bring her up then? Wait, were they born in 27? Maybe 29 is when Sean Connery was born. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's Sean Connery. <laughs> Who's the guy that was in uh, Three Days of the Condor? Gene Hackman? Yeah. No, that's uh, French Connection. That is good, Mike. Thank you. It is Thank good. You. It's like a mango chutney. You ever had that? I have, and it smells like that. I haven't yeah. tasted it yet, but that's what it's. You haven't like. tasted this shit yet? I have not, dude. Buddy. No, nah, man. I'm, when, I'm, when we're done. All right. But, dude, there was so much, like, funny shit in this recipe, in this fucking book You don't want to know who else was born in 1929? <laughs> who, who else did my moms like to fuck was born in 1929, John? There's one more guy. I got to think of it. Let me guess. Donald Pleasance. <laughs> no, it was Steve McQueen. All right, we're All right, done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you I what. had to get that out, though. All right, close your eyes once more. If you guys were 85-year-old women... And you could have one rock hard old bird. Why are your eyes closed for this? Because yeah. <laughs> I want you to imagine getting piped down by a, a rock hard varicose veined bird. Who would it be? Um, if I was eighty five, uh, Robert um, Redford. Yeah, Sundance. It's a good one. Jake, who would you get piped down by? Just. By word association alone, Rock Hudson. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what I was going to say. But I don't know who he is, what he looks like. He might not be handsome. Redford, though, I know he's handsome. <laughs> oh, he was the hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> oh! oh, he's already in my ass. <laughs> rock, you stinker. Classic rock. All right, so she was born January 9th, 1929 in Redlands, California. Okay. Born into a fucked up situation like most of our stinkers. Yeah. Her dad was Jesse James, who was a cotton picker and an alcoholic. And her mom was Trudy May, also an alcoholic. Guess what she did for a profession? Stripper? Yeah, she was a sex worker. No way. She was a in sex worker. In the work. 30s? Dog, she was getting it in. Damn. Dude, and, um, and this is the husband knows this. I imagine he. Yeah, he's fucking drunk. Yeah, and he's she's bringing the cotton. cake back, yeah. dude. Yeah. So, and I'm 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 gonna include the picture when I put this video up. But the husband is a very fucking handsome dude. Really? Yeah, dude. I, it just it was striking how handsome her dad was. Maybe he liked to watch too. Maybe yeah, he was yeah. an early freak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're one of them dust bowl freaks. <laughs> Waiting in bread ass, motherfucking ass. <laughs> what kind of shit you think early freaks were into? <laughs> oh, Doggy style. Not seeing the face of the fucking pig they were plowing. A ma- a ratio? What was it? I don't know. Oh, Irimatio. Irimatio. Wow, dude, yeah, I yeah. can't believe you remember that. Thank you. Oh, man, you, you guys like my chutney and you remembered... Uh, the Italian word for face fucking. <laughs> God damn, this is, I love this podcast, man. Yeah, I'm going to ear a that salsa at the end of this. 
You should feed some to, the, to my decapitated head. <laughs> we should do a lot of things with that head. Thank you, John. <laughs> so she's born into a fucked up situation, and it it gets pretty fucked up. By the time this, she, Dorothy Puente is even fucking eight years old, her dad fucking dies. Gets tuberculosis in 1937. He fucking dies. A year later, guess what else fucking happens? Her mom gets fucked to death. Her mom get ye- close. <laughs> <laughs> she dies. Erase you. No. <laughs> the mom dies. How do you think she died? Uh, Not fucked to death, but murdered. No. Uh, a result of fucking like a disease. She crashed her motorcycle. <laughs> Seriously, to God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this bad bitch was crashing motorcycles <laughs> evil, in nineteen thirty-eight. <laughs> Jesus She tried to jump the Grand Canyon. (laughs) I don't feel feel like going around. (laughs) So this fucking poor kid, even though she didn't have a good with both parents, both parents are fucking dead pretty early on. Dad fucking gets the Burke in 37, Mm. and the mom fucking evil Knievels her ass into fucking heaven in 1938. (laughs) (laughs) So... She's got it pretty rough. She's got fucking, I believe, seven siblings. And the kids are just spread out all over the place now. They tried having her live with different relatives. Ultimately, she ends up in an orphanage. And she just, unfortunately, gets abused Mm -hmm. during that time. So she's there for a while. And in 1945, she turns 16. She turns into a working lady at this point. What do you think she does for a living? Riveting things, playing a league of their own baseball, and the war's over at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, shit, I don't know. She becomes a sex worker, too. I was Damn. gonna guess that. Who guess it? You can <laughs> say it, man. I was like, no way she follows in her mom's footsteps. She did. But she finds a husband pretty quickly. And he's Through the trade? Probably. So he's a World War II hero. His name is Fred McFall. So Fred McFall. Definitely just didn't make that Dude. up. <laughs> That's a real name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I owe you an apology, by the way, too. I should have oh, yeah, started yeah, off with this. Anyway, um, all right, Dar- let's, let's leave it off with Dorothy Puente marrying Fred McFall at the age of 16. I, I owe both of you my deepest of apologies here. Last, last episode, you had asked me if Edmund Kemper's mother was a big woman. And I said no. And she was a big fat lady. She was a great big fat person. Guys, she was a very big bitch. Oh, man. <laughs> she was six feet tall and 225 pounds. I am so sorry. And she it's played, my exact body. <laughs> and she played for the Houston Oilers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't That's wanna, sick, dude. I don't want you walking around with misinformation and filling your brains. <laughs> So I, I owe you that apology, and I owe you the correct information. Wow. So Mrs. Uh, Clarnell Kemper was a big bitch. I John. honestly thought you were going to nope. apologize for the pronunciation of Clarnell. Uh, I, listen, <laughs> I've watched numerous videos just to try to verify that I'm not a moron. <laughs> and every video that I watched that pronounced her name pronounced it as Clarnell. Hmm. Does anybody talk about it? That's not a fucking name. Listen, man. It's fucking in the Kemper household. It's like Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. <laughs> All right. So let's let's let fucking decapitated heads lie. Oi, me, scribe sure? teats. Are you sure it wasn't Mrs. Finkel? <laughs> Mrs. Ray Finkel? <laughs> Six foot, 225. Damn. I feel strong now. You, you, I, I've been meaning to tell you this, but you would make a great mother. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever thought about that, yeah. but you really would make a good well, mom. My penis is you, <laughs> gradually turning into a vagina, so <laughs> fingers do, crossed. You do have serial killer bearing hips. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, to that point, I remember one of the very first times where I just felt utterly emasculated. I was probably about 11 years old, fat as shit. My move was to lay on the living room floor with my head in my hand like this. Yeah. And dude, I would open up my my mom and my aunt when depending upon where I was, they would buy me a half pound of Virginia baked ham. <laughs> and I would peel off <laughs> slices of Virginia baked ham as though I was eating <laughs> potato chips. So I'm laying on the floor eating my Virginia baked ham 
watching MTV videos, and my sister's sitting on the couch, and out of nowhere, she just yells out, Dan. She's like, damn, you got bitch hips. <laughs> they just throw you ham like you're a junkyard dog. <laughs> Was you eating a half a pound of lunch meat a day? No, not a day. This was like my um. You remember TGIF on uh, ABC? Yeah, with Urkel and Where everybody fucking else Family was, Matters. Was eating a pizza and drinking Pepsi. You were yeah. I was sucking down it. some Virginia baked ham. <laughs> <laughs> High sodium, by the way. Yeah, dude, a lot. <laughs> High delicious. That's all the fucking matter. Do you roll it up or you just plopping just, it in? Just scrunch it up like I was like, like I was a writer that was throwing out a page I didn't like. <laughs> Ah, pretty, this is pretty horse fucked shit. up, dude. <laughs> no one's ever going to read this. All school and no play makes Mike a dull boy. <laughs> makes Mike a fatter boy. <laughs> God damn, being a fat child sucked, dude. Sounds pretty sick. Almost as bad as Dorothy Apuente's child. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so she marries Fred McFall, and in 1946, she gives birth to a girl. And by 1948, she gives birth to another girl. This does not work out well. She's fucking losing it. She's not good mentally. She's just not a good mother. So they give the first kid to relatives, and then eventually they give the second kid up for adoption. Um, later in 1948, even after giving the kids away, she has a miscarriage. And at this point, her husband's like, fuck this. I'm out of here. Now, in 1948, this is when the real stinker wheels start turning. What do you think she gets into that makes her an honest-to-goodness stinker at this point? She's still hoeing? She's still... I don't know if she's hoeing. Turning tricks? But she's she's really branching out here. Is, is turning tricks a uh, pejorative term at this point? At this point? What does pejorative mean? Uh, like negative, nasty. In my Would eyes, sex workers no. not like that term? In my eyes, no. I feel like I haven't heard that one specifically. Yeah, you sound like, like a fucking 1930s detective. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put your beers in like a, a fucking pull-out drawer in your desk <laughs> and have like like a Murphy love seat fall down so you can sit here and do this podcast with me. Oh, that you mean that board behind us doesn't pull out? <laughs> fold down? I just don't want to get canceled for saying turning tricks. I'm, dude, that doesn't sound too bad to me. I think, it's, I think it sounds good still. Jake, you're going to be the judge on this oh, one. Man. Is turning tricks okay to say... I, it, if know, I walked into a brothel right now and I said, uh, which one of you dames are turning tricks? <laughs> do you think I would get the eyebrow slapped off my face or do you think I'd be all right? I think you might be all right. All know? right. Yeah. All right, I we're going to go no with authority it, authority in this matter. <laughs> <laughs> I also said hoeing before that, but I'm not what? worried about that. I, yeah. I didn't even notice that. That, that was <laughs> good. I like hoeing. I like hoeing, too. Yeah. I think we should... St- Keep both of those terms. All right, done deal. It's settled. <laughs> so in 1948, she's branching out a little bit. She starts writing bad checks, dude. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that somebody else's move that we covered? Yeah. I don't know, man. Maybe it somebody's does... parent did it. Uh, I, I have to look back at that. Man, could you imagine? Fucking 80 years ago, just being able to fucking. Oh God, you could do that anywhere. Write yeah. Checks. Just Dude. be a fucking, you know, ride the rails. Yeah. Write a fucking $100 check every day for food. I was writing bad checks in the 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the night that, um, well, it wasn't the night the Phillies won the World Series. You know how the, like, the, the game where they won the World Series was divided into two nights yeah. because of the yeah. rain? Well, the first night, I had no money left. Like, I had been keeping beer and champagne on ice in a gigantic Tupperware container. Yeah, that two night really fucked you, right? Fuck you were only me, ready for man. one. God damn, dude. I didn't have a car, so like I was walking down McDade Boulevard with a fucking 40-pound bag of ice over my shoulder <laughs> and beer and champagne in my other hand. And like got a, it all home. I put it on. You're like a Delco Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> so I got it all home, and it, that, that overnight shit really fucked me. But the first night before it ended up fucking me, I didn't have any money because the plan was to do all that drinking back in my apartment after the Phillies won a World Series, but I would watch the game at my corner bar, which was Kevin Michaels, and it was like, at the time, it was like fucking $2 Budweiser, so you didn't need a lot of money to get yeah. fucked up there. The plan was, and the plan came to fruition, there was a Walmart across from Kevin Michaels. I went there, and I floated a bad check just to get $20 cash back so I can go drinking that night. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Yeah. Did it come back to ruin your credit? 
No, I, I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I actually <laughs> hey, I haven't looked into I'm, it since. I'm still repairing my credit right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting so close to having good credit, but I feel like every month it's just like, ah, well, this is just like, all right, fuck. Ah, well, I got to order two heads off of Amazon to <laughs> scare my buddies with. <laughs> but, yeah, my credit. Damn, I cannot believe that worked dude, it's, 12 it, years ago. Dude, at Walmart, you can do anything. The last time I performed at Punchline, I cashed my Punchline check there. And do they, what do they take out? I like, don't even, no, nothing substantial. Damn. Wait, are you doing, are you Cash in at Walmart because you're not allowed to go into a real bank. Well, I had cash. <laughs> so I had a my my last punchline set was like fucking 2017, and at the time my bank account was overdrawn, and it was overdrawn by like probably something which was probably a significant amount of my punchline check. Yeah, because I probably got like 200 bucks from punchline, but an overdrawn fee like an overdrawn bank account it's like everything's 36 bucks. Yeah. So that's why I went to Walmart to get it. So I can identify with Dorothy Puente writing bad checks because, like, that shit does feel good, man. <laughs> I want to, I want to do that. It feels good. Go to Walmart. I'm gonna find my checkbook. Yeah, I got. I, <laughs> here's mine. <laughs> you got it, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, <laughs> Jake, should we do this or no? <laughs> uh, you know what? This sounds like a good idea for the Patreon, dude. <laughs> this motherfucker's <laughs> spitting out words like pejorative and convincing me to give him bad checks. <laughs> Are you a cop? <laughs> I'm hypnotizing him like Charlie <laughs> Manson. All right, so she writes bad checks. This is 1948. She gets in trouble for it. She was, she was just having fun, man. She was buying ladies' accessories with this fucking bad check money. Yeah, just looking like a bad bitch on the street. Oh my god, dude! Everybody Fur coats wanted, and stuff. Everybody wanted that pussy. <laughs> All right, she's single again, right? She is. Yes. Yeah. Not for long, though. All right, so she writes these bad checks in 1948, buys all this cool shit for herself, and she gets arrested for it, and she has to do four months in jail. Does her four months. Nothing really important happens over the next couple of years. In 1952, somebody else falls in love with this bad bitch. This dude's got a really fucking cool name. Another cooler than McFall? Mm-hmm. You could tell this dude's got a fucking hammer. What do you think his name is? Fucking Pleasant Piper. <laughs> Rock Hudson. <laughs> Axel Johansson. Damn. Yep. That's cool. Axel in the 50s? Yeah. Fuck. Names suck now. And you think his hammer went all the way down to his... No, 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 knees. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you a bad bitch, dog. <laughs> All right, so she's playing. She's playing tricks on this motherfucker. She wants to create like an air of mystery about her, so she tells Axel Johansson that she is Israeli and Egyptian. Egyptian. She and tells she's him she's not exotic at all, right? She's, no, she's, she's just from American. fucking California, dude. Yeah. So she tells him her name is Taya Neowarda Singala or something, dude. It's something so fucked up that like. I can't. I can't even begin to remember what it is now. That sounds like fucking the Black Panther's real name. Really? It's kind of right. Was it like T'Challa? Is the I think it's Chadwick Boseman. Uh, R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean Where the guy that I was in a movie with? <laughs> oh yeah, right. yeah dude. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Gambit from X Men, right? I don't know that person. Uh, Friday Night Lights quarterback, right? I don't know. Handsome, long hair guy. Oh yeah, yeah. What what the fuck Fucking, is his name? Uh, I know who you're talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Riggins. <laughs> Riggins. Murtaugh. <laughs> you don't, I did, I did Are you doing the weapon, weapon stuff? <laughs> I think I'm mixing the both of them up. Riggs. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, that rules. Were you in uh, proximity with? No, he no. he he wasn't. This was like. My scene that I filmed. What what the fuck was the name of that movie? Seventeen Bridges. Seventeen Bridges. They when changed I think it. There's actually twenty one bridges. Like they fucked the title up. Even dude, they switched it somehow. I've never seen the fucking movie. I've seen the clip that I'm in. It's either it either started out as twenty one bridges and ended up being seventeen bridges, or started or out as seventeen around. and twenty one. Yeah. I think now it's I think it's twenty one now. I don't fucking know, but um, no, he was already done shooting them. The only the biggest name that was there that night. Um, the guy's name was Stefan something. He was like, I guess, like the third biggest star in the movie. 
Nah, J.K. Simmons was in it. Yeah, he was the second one. So it was Chadwick Boseman, J.K. Simmons, and then this guy, Stefan. Um, I can't remember his last name. But There's no famous Stefans out there. I'm telling you, look up this guy. Not he, as famous he, as the guy from Friday Night Lights, whose name we can't even remember. I mean, very <laughs> handsome guy. Very handsome gentleman. Fuck. Oh, dude, I had a dress like I was. I played a cop, and they gave me a cop uniform. Did you have line? I Lines? did. Nice. I dude. said. Uh, I said something like, uh, "I need to see your security footage right now." Do you get fucking? I do. SAG for that, or like, I, did dude, you join SAG? No, I got a waiver for it. Yeah. So they end like every f- every few months, like I get a royalty check. Like the first two are cool. It was like a few hundred bucks. Fuck yeah. The last one I got was I think for like seventeen cents. Wow. It's like after yeah. Or was it twenty one cents? <laughs> Jake, no, they keep, they keep changing the check. <laughs> yeah. Stefan James. There I, it is. I don't yeah. recognize him. Taylor Kitsch is who you're thinking of. Okay, cool. Was he in it? He Taylor was. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I did not see him. John Carter. Oh, my God. Remember what do you know movie? about Barsoom and John Carter? <laughs> I know nothing about that movie. Oh, my God. I saw it in theaters. It was. You know, it's like the biggest flop of all time, right? Yeah. yeah. It was so <laughs> fucking bad, dude. They changed the name of the movie. That was like one of the first ones they did that with. What was it called? It was called John Carter Goes to Mars, and then they, and then dropped they just the changed goes it to Mars. John Carter. Yeah. So just no child at all would ever want to go see it. <laughs> yeah. John Carter sounds fucking gay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I think, so, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm so, dude, don't even get me started on John Carter and Barsoom. If we, this, we'll never get back to fucking all right, the bad bitch. Well, let's talk about it at the end. I, I want to get. I, okay. I, I want to keep going on Dorothea Puente. Now I'm gonna be thinking about Barsoom this whole fucking time. <laughs> I don't Barsoom even know what that was, is. Barsoom is what they call Mars on Mars. Oh. I'm telling you, this movie fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, Axel Johansson is an interesting guy himself. Um, he's a seaman. Mm. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, as I, as I, you know, find this shit, like, I just know what's automatically going to make you guys laugh, so... I'm glad we're in the same boat on semen. So this motherfucker's away for like weeks and months at same a time. Same boat. You see what he did there? Yeah. Oh my God, this is so awesome. God, puns are so Woo! natural to you. <laughs> They've destroyed my brain. All right, so Axel Johansson is a semen who's away for weeks and months at a time. So what do you think old Dorothea Puente is doing with all this time on her hands? She ain't not filling her pussy up with dicks. Porking and gambling? Yeah. yeah, she is porking and she is fucking tearing it up with 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 fucking Axel's money. Damn. So he eventually she's like a military seaman or is this like a merchant marine kind of thing? Just seaman. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I, actually, I think it is a merchant marine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, just so, like a fisherman or whatever. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So he's out there. Eventually, he fucking gets tired of her shit. He leaves her. So she's on her own again. She starts doing her own shit. Bad bitch. No, she's got that good pussy. Writing bad checks to give herself all kinds of cool shit to wear. She starts her own brothel. Whoa. Yep. She hasn't murdered anybody yet, right? No, dude. She's just she's just living life on her terms. She's just truly being a a, a good bad bitch. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, she, she is somebody who you would enjoy sitting next to at a bar. Yeah. Hell yeah. So, in 1906, she's running a brothel, and... Cops come, they raid the place. They say, see all these sex workers running about. Probably hear a lot of porking going on. Fucking beds creaking, walls shaking, dogs barking, <laughs> cats dragging their assholes across the carpet. Everything you would find in a brothel. <laughs> Just describe the haunted house, too. <laughs> walls creaking, <laughs> bed. Yeah, e- yeah, just everybody in that place doing the mash. <laughs> All right, so they they don't buy that they're doing the mash. <laughs> Got Igor up in that bitch mashing his ass off. <laughs> Crip Keeper Five up in that bitch spinning records all day. <laughs> they were paid for graveyard cash. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that is a fun voice to watch you do. You, man. Jesus Christ, dude! I I might be on the verge of death because everything is working out for me tonight. I think this is like, man, this is this is such such wonderful karma. 
in consideration of what I what I was up against with the Donald Duck impression <laughs> two months ago. So, man, this fucking feels good, dude. All right. So, you know what? I take that back. Like, I don't think her I don't think fucking Axel Johansson left her at this point. So, in 1960, she does get caught running the brothel, which I think is probably what fucking really turns the tides in that relationship. Got caught by him? No, she got caught by the cops in 1960. Yeah. So, in 1961, he fucking, um, Axel has her committed to DeWitt State Hospital. On what grounds? Uh, Making I'm, fucking money off a of pussy? Dude, it's funny you bring that up because this was, this, the re- reasoning for the grounds was written in a book by Carla Norton entitled Disturbed Ground. So... I just think it's interesting to use that word. Well, I mean, could a husband just say, "My wife's crazy. You have to take her and lock well, her up"? Well, dude, two of the two of the reasons in two, 1960. Dog, there were there were I think three reasons that he was able to use to get her committed, and two of them were like one was like, "All right, I can." Uh, the other one was like, "Yeah, definitely," but then the third one was just like, "Come on, you can get somebody committed for this." Yeah. Uh-huh. So the Your most Honor, she wants to work. <laughs> <laughs> he just throws the fucking gavel at her. <laughs> All right, so three of the reasons were for her com- being committed to DeWitt Hospital was the most serious one, which was suicidal threats. Two, you could have your wife committed for drinking. Jesus. And the, a third reason that he had her committed for it was lying. God, yeah, dude. <laughs> this was like fucking kindergarten timeouts. Doug, <laughs> considering what I just told you about Edmund Kimber's mom... <laughs> Back yeah. in 1960, you could have had me committed for saying she was not a, a big bitch. Fucking rubber room right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, so she gets committed for a short time. So this is 1961. A few years go by. 1966, they finally get divorced. She's still not killing people yet. Dorothy Puente is just fucking, you know, at this point... She's 37 years old. Still hasn't fucking killed anybody, in- which is strange. That's insane. That's a first, right, for Dude, what we've covered? Yeah. I don't think anybody started murdering people as late as she has done. Well, how old was well, OJ? OJ? Yeah. I think OJ... OJ's in his 40s, right? 40... I'm going to guess but 46. That was like a one-time thing. Right, not a... He yeah. was He was not very angry. serial John. killer. He was very angry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was him. But like, so there's no record of her like you know just like cutting up animals or anything like no, that. No, no weird shit. I wow. mean, she she loved drinking, loved gambling, loved lying, and loved selling pussy. Dude, this is like a midlife crisis. Yeah, kind of thing. She could be a satanist. And you said her mom she ain't died. Nobody. <laughs> her mom died uh, by motorcycle accident. So she's like, I can't get a motorcycle. <laughs> I guess I'll just murder yeah. people. <laughs> All right, Super Dave Osborne is already making TV shows, <laughs> so that's taken. All right, so at this point in 1966, now I don't know whether she's doing this because she does have a kind bone in her body, but she starts becoming a caregiver for needy women. So she's able to make some cash doing that. Okay, so... That's 1966. In 1968, she's a bad bitch, so you know she's in high demand. She gets married again. Her fucking husband sounds like the Latin lover of Latin lovers. This motherfucker's name is Roberto Puente. Oh, damn. So you know this motherfucker's wearing cologne. I was was hoping you'd say Slash. (laughs) (laughs) He took her down to Paradise City, baby. (laughs) So, that's 1968. It's a tumultuous relationship, and by 1973... With a Latin man? You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're not getting us canceled with prostitutes, you're going to get us canceled with the Latino community, dude. So, thanks a lot, dickhead. They're fiery tempers. <laughs> that's what I've heard. <laughs> oh, man. How would you... Uh, if, would you describe my temper as a hot Latin temper or uh uh-uh. what 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 gauge temperature and what ethnicity would you would you call my temper? You're 
it wouldn't be ethnicity. You're fucking corn the band ang like that's your level of angry. Oh, thank you. No, I don't think it's a compliment. <laughs> I think it's like uh, I'm not really gonna take them seriously. <laughs> oh. Jake, I'm just kidding. Jake, do me a favor. Eat the rest of that salsa. <laughs> <laughs> now you freak me out pretty good. Oh, thank you, dude. Yeah. I appreciate that. I would say German. Oh, thank you, Jake. Yes. Oh. Danke Shane. No. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So that's uh, 1973 is when they get divorced. 1973, you know, shit starts falling into place for her and not in a good way. So she ends up moving into a house in Sacramento, which is located at 1426 F Street. <laughs> Which is a great name for a brothel, dude. What a street, man. But I don't, I don't think she's even selling pussy out of this house. But, man, that should have been the brothel. Missed opportunity. Man, Damn. if you're buying a house and you're just like, oh, yeah, it's on F Street. Like, yeah, fuck it's me, 42069 F Street. <laughs> it's pretty chill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So at this point, you know, I had mentioned a few years prior she got into um, helping women who needed mm -hmm. a fucking hand. They were just beaten down by life. So she starts running AA meetings out of her house. She starts, it's a pretty big house too. I don't know how many bedrooms it has. Um, and I forget the square footage, but there's so much, so much um, content on it online that you could check it out. And I'm going to put pictures of this shit up, you know, when we put the video out, but it's such a cool fucking house too. It's 1426 F street and it's Victorian duplex. And aside from like looking cool, it's like in a cool part of town. Um, at the corner, there's a cool corner bar that she frequents, which is now a barbecue joint. So nice. sounds yeah. like a trip. It is, yeah, dude. And I don't know if they're still running trips there, but the people who ended up taking over the house, uh, this guy Tom Williams and Barbara Holmes, they bought it about ten years ago, with the purpose of like letting people come in it. Well, dude, they they eventually ended up doing that. Damn. So they did. They would sell tickets. And the last time that I saw that they were selling tickets was in 2013. And, dude, they're so fucking cool, too. There's there's a few different videos out there on them. Um, and they actually did something else very cool. So they were selling tickets to allow people to come to 1426 F Street. And the interior still looks the same. They haven't changed much about it. So does the outside. So it's like what you see on the news from when police eventually raided the house. Still looks pretty it much exactly the same. It still looks the same. Yeah. So, um... Uh, Barbara Holmes and Tom Williams, they ended up maintaining the house. They let people come and chill, and they get a kick out of it being what it is because it ended mm. up being a house where fucking seven bodies were found on the property. Damn, I thought you said she what? just murdered three people. She got convicted of three murders. Uh, I'm, I'm conflicted right now whether I should keep going into this or just... All right. Take it whatever direction right. you feel. So I'll get back to what she's doing in this fucking house before I, I get into the details of what... What uh, Barbara and Tom are doing with mm -hmm. the because it's actually very it and there's some very funny shit involved. So, in 1973, she turns it into a boarding home. She's having AA meetings there. She's having fucking. She hooks up with like lo local social workers. Did she stop drinking? No, she's just letting people have yeah. meetings. Yeah, there. she yeah. figured it out. It's like okay, this is a pretty good grift. Mm -hmm. And you know, she's she presents older than she actually is. Um, she does herself up like she's like she's much older. So this is 1973. So she's so like she's 40 44. Something, yeah. She's 44, but she, she just out there looking like Nanny Doss. Yes, dude. Yeah. I mean, she just looks like an old bitch right now. Like she's got she wears old lady clothing. She wears these gigantic old lady glasses. Oh man. She has dentures, so she just fucking has her teeth out on the regular. So she just looks like a regular ass mama. Yeah. So in addition to having all these people there, she she has social workers come by to check in on all these people because it's all people that have had really fucking rough fucking goes at, li go mm -hmm. goes at life. She befriends a lot of the social workers. They come to trust her. And she's able to fucking um, somehow finagle their SSI checks from them. So anybody who's staying at the house, she figures it out. They're like, all right, I'm taking this motherfucker in because I know he's got an SSI check coming. Wow. When the SSI, well, I mean, check, yeah, it comes to the house. You just fucking sign it over to cash or whatever, right? Yeah, dude, yeah. and she cashes all these fucking checks. Damn, still so, making fucking bank fraud, dude. This is great. She's she's on fire at this point. This is what year? This is nineteen seventy three, dude. So she's got like a computer. 
Like in the basement, like one of those giant ones. I wouldn't doubt it, dude. Yeah, that's awesome. And, dude, around this time, too, bad bitch, getting money, what do you think happens? Gets drunk, does something fucking cool. <laughs> she gets married again. Damn. She gets uh. married again to another Latin king named Pedro Montalvo. All right. However, this marriage only lasts a week. Damn. What? Yep. Not Some too real long. Vinny Chase type shit. Um, at this point, um, no, nothing really. She's got the grift going for a while. So that's in 73 where that's going on. She's got it going for a few years. In 1978, she gets arrested. So they get her on check fraud charges for 34 of the checks that she fucking cashed on her own. Okay. Um, no jail time, five years probation, and she's got to pay $4,000 restitution. So they're kind of on to her, but at the same time, like, this is still at a time. This is 1978. So information isn't just readily available. Right. You know, she's probably made, like, a local paper, but she's still running this fucking boarding house. So people, like, aren't on to her in the way that they should be on to her. A couple of years go by. April of 82, she has, she goes into, like, some kind of like weird business. I, I, I don't remember like what the business was, but she was like technically like starting up something with this lady named Ruth Monroe, who's just like an older lady who's got a sick husband and she's not living with him for some reason, which is strange. She has children, but they still have her living at this boarding house with Dorothea Puente. Dorothea becomes aware that she's got a bunch of money and I think um, she kept cash on her all the time and hell yeah w and it, if it's the same person I'm thinking of which I believe it is it's over $11,000 in cash that she keeps on her oh my god not wow. like no it's not a like a couple hundred bucks no, no, for no, walking no, no, around no, no, money no, no, no. no so <laughs> she keeps her fucking life savings strapped to her body every day she's got that motherfucking thing on her <laughs> dude <laughs> <laughs> so at this point you know this is 1982 Ruth Monroe is her first murder victim. For money, yes. basically. Yeah. And she kills Ruth, Ruth Monroe. How do you think she does it? I'm thinking it's not a gruesome way like the other people. This right. seems like a, a logical reason to murder somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I'm getting money out of it. I'm yeah. not just some yeah, a lot of money sick too. fucking freak, you know? This I'm lady's got eleven thousand dollars on her, and I'm gonna need to make her heart stop to get it. Yeah. Um, not stabbing. No way. Mm -mm. Uh, I feel like this is a pillow over the face kind of situation. Or poison. Poison pillow. All right. So what she does, she um, feeds her an excessive amount of um, codeine. So deep, put her butt to sleep. She puts her to sleep Sipping permanently. Sipping that fucking scissor, dude. Dude, what she would do is like, well, she eventually got to the point where she was baking um, fucking um, sleeping pills into fucking cakes. Like the, the contents of sleeping pills into cakes. Like wow. enough to kill somebody? Enough to incapacitate them. And it's hard to determine whether or not like that's what actually killed them. Or if she did the pillow over the face. What she, yeah, what she would do for, for at least some of the victims was incapacitate them with either sleeping pills or codeine. Something like that. Lean. Put them out. Lean yeah. to death, dude. Yeah, she was... This bitch was leaning. <laughs> so she would do that, and then she would suffocate them if yeah. that didn't kill them. That's like Kevorkian style. It's like, yeah, dude, you know... It's very it's... methodical, very fucked up. And, dude, one of, the, one of the most fucked up aspects of all this is she had a, a whole process for all this shit. So in the top floor of this uh, 1426 F Street, this beautiful Victorian house, there were two rooms on the very top floor. One was her bedroom... And the other room is what became known as the death room. So after she would fuck these people up, now with Ruth Monroe, she didn't feed her cake. She made her a drink. And you're with probably... two spy styrofoam cups. <laughs> 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 a little Sprite in there, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she made her a drink um, with uh, creme de menthe. That's how it's pronounced? I think so, yeah. With that being, like... That'll cover up the taste of a yes. cough syrup or whatever. And she was giving, giving it to her pretty often. So much so that at one point, Ruth Monroe's son came to visit her. And he knew his mom didn't drink. And he's like, what the fuck are you drinking? 
she's like, oh, it's just something that Dorothea gave me to take the edge off because her husband was sick with cancer at the time. Uh And the the kid was just like, all right, I guess. Was it always mixed with codeine when she gave it to her? Or was yeah, it I, just... I think she was gradually incapacitating her, uh-huh. and then wouldn't that like help your system though, like uh... like develop a tolerance? Yeah, I don't know, dude. I, well, I I'm gonna guess that this only happened over a short period of time, mm-hmm. and not long enough for her to develop any kind of like tolerance toward addiction. Also, if she just put the codeine once at the end, yeah. it'd be a very noticeable taste difference. So I guess she just yeah. a little bit over time would make yeah. her not notice a big change in taste. Yeah. Okay. So, um, how cool would it be if she got Lil Wayne to come stay at the house? <laughs> <laughs> That's what got him booked. <laughs> All right. So, um, Wheezy F Street Baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's contagious. It is, dude. All right. So, in. Uh, all right. So, let's see. All right. So, she's doing that. She gets her. She ends up killing Ruth Monroe. Now, even though she got popped for the fucking fraudulent shit. A few years prior. Yeah, no one's expecting no her. No one's to... expecting her to fucking kill anybody. Yeah, so, so she just say, we got a dead body here. Yeah, so the cops show up, and right. she's just like, um, I believe she drank too much codeine mm-hmm. because her husband was sick with cancer, and she was having a hard time dealing with it. And the cops just fucking believe her. Right, I mean... And that's... why would you not? You know, yeah. it's an old-ass lady that's running a boarding house for the fucked up. Right. Seems so, pretty, like, master plan. She's know, really good. Solid. She's really good at this shit. Yeah. And as time goes by, like... No, I shouldn't say she, she gets better because she starts getting into more and more fucked up shit. Because people would say, like, people that lived in this house would say, in the middle of the night, they would hear what they believed to be at the time and what they eventually discovered to be true was that bodies were being dragged down the steps. Really? Like, you could hear it being drugged downstairs. What? <laughs> so, right now, um, she's got that one. She's got a fucking... She's got a taste for it now. So there's a guy named Malcolm McKenzie who's also staying at the house. She gets him a few weeks later. Sounds rich. Malcolm McKenzie? Malcolm just sounds like a rich name. I would say it's probably Spud McKenzie's stepbrother. <laughs> Another party dog. He got he got two partied out. What was he staying there for, though? Just a... He needed a place to live? Yeah, like, live? people ranged from, like, being fucked up on drugs, alcoholics, the mentally ill... And just people that have just had a rough, rough go at life. Yeah. And, and people that carry $11,000 on their person. Yeah. yeah. And, dude, it was to the point where, like, there were still social workers that would recommend her. Because mm-hmm. they know, like, she always had a place. Like, there were always fucking rooms available. This is a big-ass fucking house. Is uh, running a AA meeting profitable? Like, do, does oh, the no. group pay you? No. Or is so, that just part of her, like, I think oh, that's yeah, part I'm of a nice grift. person. Now, what happens is, like, like there's two kinds of 12-step meetings. There's open and closed. A closed meeting is you have to be an alcoholic in order to attend. Okay. With an open meeting, anybody could go. Yeah. So it's like, you know, with a closed meeting, you say, like, you know, I'm Mike, I'm an alcoholic, and mm-hmm. then everybody who speaks will do the same. However, with an open meeting, if somebody chooses to speak and they're not an alcoholic, they could just introduce themselves as themselves, mm-hmm. which is what I imagine, like, her doing, and people were cool with it. And for her, that's that's like a networking event. Yeah. You know, it's a pretty pretty sick move for what you're into. Yeah. So she's doing that shit. Um, August 18th, 1982, she, she gets arrested and she gets convicted of theft. She does five. She's sentenced to five years in prison. Damn, finally yep. serving some real time. Yeah. So what she, was the theft for? Was it like... I, I'm guessing checks again. Yeah. So while she's in there, again, bad bitch... What do you think happens while she's in prison? It made me think of somebody that we just covered. Ah, uh, oh, fuck. Who? Does she learn how to cook in prison? She's already killing it, man. Oh, she, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you had the salsa. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> um, I don't know. She starts pen pound with some old ass fucking retiree who hasn't even had the pussy yet, and he's been. Get, he got got hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, damn. This guy, Everson Gilmouth. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Come on, dude. Get to us, swear to God. You fucking made that up, uh, Everson dude. Everson Gilmouth. <laughs> and this motherfucker's like, take me to the river. <laughs> Put me in your pussy. <laughs> dude, dude. Dude, I swear to God, this motherfucker's name is Everson Gilmouth. <laughs> you stay up late making up you these fucking names. You can't even say it, Mike. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> 
there's going to be fucking mud in your eye when I show you pictures of this motherfucker. <laughs> They've ever seen Gilmouth on a fucking Geo City like, say he made himself <laughs> last night. <laughs> he has like catfish whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Everson Gilmouth is a retiree. Who's sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's 17 inches long. <laughs> <laughs> he was the prize catch at the marina last year. <laughs> All right. I'm sticking by it. Do you guys want to keep going or you want to fucking shut it down for the night? <laughs> All right, so Everson Gilmouth is communicating... With Dorothy Puente, they fall in love. Dude, she got sentenced to five years. She's only got to do three. Damn. Dorothea gets out. Who do you think's waiting outside the prison gates for her? Old catch of the day, Gilmel. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since, dude, this sounds like so romantic, too. Like, he's apparently out there leaning against his red pickup truck. Nice. Beautiful love story. All right. How long was he out of water for? <laughs> He was actually in the flatbed in the fish tank yeah, with a tarp and filled with water. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, I think this is like summer of '85. Um, by November of '85, um, things had obviously taken a turn. So she's back at 1426 F Street, and she hires a gentleman named Ismael Flores to do some work for her. So he's doing some paneling inside the house, and then she's got some other stuff for him to do. She needs him to move a coffin-sized box. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. She needs him to move a coffin. Dude, I'm, I can't wait to put the picture of this shit up because it's a coffin. Like it's yeah. cl- there's nothing Coven else that this could be. Box. She says it's just. Is that like, just what she hired? She was like yeah. said that as a description. It's like, instead of saying body, human body sized box. <laughs> yeah. She says it's like books and all kinds of other junk in it. Sure, so, dude. She hires him to do paneling. And to fucking get rid of this shit, and for payment for doing paneling throughout the house and all this other odds and ends shit. Excuse me. She has him doing. She's like, all right, I'll pay you eight hundred bucks cash. And I have a red truck that I'm not using anymore. Damn. Hmm. So she killed this motherfucker. She killed fucking Everson Gilmouth. She threw him back in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Catch and release. Made him a little bit earlier for heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, she's like, all right, if you can get rid of this shit, too, you can have the truck, too. So Jesus Christ, you know you're doing something illegal when... The payment is a working automobile. Yeah, dude. So they fucking load this shit up. He, he puts it in the truck. And there's a place close by called the Garden Highway. And there's a river that runs, runs alongside of it. And she's like, we could just dump it here. Like, it's it's just junk. It'll just, it's whatever. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> she really dumped him in a river? <laughs> dude, I don't know that she put him in. But she put him by the river. <laughs> Which is even more fucked up. <laughs> Don't near me the river. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so two months later, fishermen find the body. But dude, it's not until three months or three years after that, where they're able to I, the family's able to identify the remains. How did it take that long? I don't know. They used them as bait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. So at this point. She's got 40 fucking tenants in the house. Jesus Christ. And they're all like like super just fucked up people that are just, you know, just at just their fucking ends. Yeah, and they don't even know to be scared of sleeping in the upstairs room yet. No, well, people don't sleep up there. Like it's like On an, purpose? Dude, it's like an invite only. Okay. You'll get invited up there, and I think her move was to tell people who are having a particularly tough time to say, like, you know what? It's too loud down there. You don't want to deal with people coming up and down the stairs yeah. at all hours of the night. Whoever she knew had money. Yeah, come yeah. chill up here. You know, I'll fucking make sure nobody bothers you. Come chill up here. I'll, never, I'll make sure you never live another fucking day in your life. <laughs> <laughs> just sip some weed and go to sleep, dude. <laughs> just imagine everybody else. Just You go upstairs one night and you never are seen again. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear a head hitting the stairs. <laughs> fucking three in the morning. 
All right. So at this point, like she's regularly having parole agents come in and check on a lot of these people because a lot of these people have been in trouble uh -huh. coming to 1426 F Street. It's a good way to seem like you're not up to anything bad, too. Yeah. It's and like, dude, she has him in. She's very welcoming. And like you'll see that later on, too. Like when people, when detectives and cops come to her house for her, she's cool even then. Yeah. So at any way, like, like she's fucking, you know, winning these fucking parole people over that come in to check on people. And even though they have to be aware of her numerous convictions for fraud and theft at this point. Right. I think they're just so overwhelmed that they're just like, fuck it. I don't care. I got to check in on this person. I truly don't give a fuck what's happening. Yeah. If he's okay, I'm okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> And we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, like, she's still doing all the old shit that she, did, that she used to do anyway. And part of the condition of her last parole that she's not supposed to be around the elderly and she's not supposed to cash anybody else's checks. I mean, that goes without saying. Yeah. You know? <laughs> But they just don't give a fuck, and she's able to do it because she puts on a good face. So why was the elderly thing uh, even because part all, of it? All the victims that she got popped for were elderly, so they. Didn't, but she hadn't gotten popped yet, right? Well, she had. That was part of like what she had gotten convicted of was stealing checks. Oh yeah, but not and, murdering. No, 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 the no, lady. no, no. Yeah. yeah, it was just stealing checks from the elderly. Right. They didn't know she was also stealing from all these other motherfuckers. Yeah. So, um, at this point, like. This is like the late 80s. And she's got a few fucking murder victims under her belt. So she hires this fucking local guy named Chief to fucking dig some, dig some holes in the basement and to fucking dig some space in the backyard. And lo and behold, short time later, Chief disappears. So what was, dude, what, was that, what was ultimately happening was like she was hiring people, including Chief, to dig out these fucking holes, she would either kill them or kill somebody else within the house, cover it up a little bit, and have them fill it over, and then um, have it um, paved over with cement. Damn. So these were the ones inside the house. Now, outside, you know, these were just, like, plots of fucking dirt. Yeah. So the way the home is configured is that you can really see from the street, you can see the front of the house and the driveway. Like, you have to go onto the property and around the house to see the backyard. So nobody knows how fucked up this shit is unless, like, the next-door neighbor is looking from a window and seeing, like, all these fucking yeah. body-sized plots of dirt dug the <laughs> fuck up. Um, there was a guy. The guy that ended up being her undoing was this guy named Alberto Montoya, which was a local Sacramento guy that was... I think he was diagnosed with schizophrenia, but he... Um, a lot of people in the community looked out for him because he was also developmentally delayed. Mm -hmm. Very sweet guy. So people really cared about him. Unfortunately, like he came to stay with her. So as um, he's there for a little while, and eventually like he stops checking in to his social worker. Mm -hmm. So the social worker's like, all right, something fucked up is going on. I know something's not right. Social worker goes to the house. They're not convinced by what whatever Dorothy Appointe fucking tells them. She's like, all right, I don't believe any of this fucking shit, so I'm going to call the police. She calls the cops. The cops go over there. The cops see that the ground's fucked up. Mm -hmm. At this point, th this is fucking November 11th, 1988. Everything's about to come unraveled here. Police come, and like so many other stories involving police from decades prior up until this point, like, they're just so fucking, like, blasé about everything. Yeah. They come and they see all this shit. They see the grounds disturbed. They see people missing that were living at this house. Like, I don't know how you can not assume that, like, okay, this bitch is just killing people. Yeah. So they just flat out ask her, like, hey. You think it's because cops are some of the dumbest fucking people on earth? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> all right, so we've alienated cops, prostitutes, and Latinos. So who else do you want to fucking... Who's left? <laughs> I guess we still got the fucking Irish. <laughs> so, yeah, I got something about them. <laughs> Dude, the, the, the cops that show up to the scene, one of them is kind of hip to what's going on, and he just flat out asks her, like, look, do you mind if I dig up some of this recent, recently fucking covered up spot, spots in the Yeah, do you care if I look at what looks like a graveyard? Yes, like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, no, no problem. And also, there's another cop there. She gets him a shovel, too. Damn. She's standing behind him with the fucking two frying pans. <laughs> <laughs> he 
You guys, you boys thirsty? <laughs> yeah. So at this point, like the cops are digging for a while, and eventually, they start seeing pieces of clothing, and the first thing relative to human remains they see is a femur. And it turns out it belongs to this lady who was living at the house named Leona Carpenter. At this point, like, it's like, all right, their suspicions have been confirmed. There's bodies. Yeah. There's, a, there's at least one body here, and we guarantee there's going to be more. Yeah. So more, they call for more fucking cops. More cops show up. And ultimately, they end up finding seven bodies on the property. Damn, and she had... One got taken away by a coroner, and one got dumped. Yes. That's nine total, Nine right? total. Yes. yes. Wow. Nine. She ends up... <laughs> <laughs> yes, cops are some of the dumbest fucking people on earth, dude. <laughs> and I think you just held up seven fingers. <laughs> but, all right, yeah, I'm with you, dude. Dude, fellow moron. <laughs> so, there's clearly seven bodies on this property, and two that are dead that lived there before. So... There's all these fucking cops on the scene. The neighbors are freaking the fuck out because they see, like, all this fucking dirt getting carried out. And I bet you some of them had suspicions at that point. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. You get one glimpse out of the window to a backyard like that, and you're like, oh, I think we live next to a fucking murderer. Well, dude, it's funny you mention that that because one of the people that was a resident there, I can't remember this guy's fucking name, but... Probably Trout McFishy, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Trout Plankton yeah. was, uh, <laughs> as everybody's gathered around and it's, the news is already there, they see a guy with a, carrying a bunch of shit out of the house, just fucking hightailing it out of there. Yeah. And he just flat out tells them, like, I had suspicions that bodies were being fucking taken out of here, and I know there's going to be more. Yeah. So, dude, they find fucking seven bodies on this property. She's not a suspect. Jesus. It's her house. Fucking so, she Christ. She goes just because she's like being so cool about it. Dude, like, it, is that the? It's fucking she moronic. She shovels. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She couldn't have done it. Jake, she did you try the mango salsa? <laughs> yeah. No way. She <laughs> killed some people. <laughs> yeah. It had to have been Chief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet you Chief buried all these bodies and then buried himself in cement. <laughs> Dude, that is insane. Uh, so there was one chief and a lot of Indians that they found on the scene. <laughs> That's all right. Now we've alienated Christ, man. Hmm. So she goes up to one of the first couple cops who showed up, one of the first couple detectives, and she's like, "This is too much for me." She's like, "I need to go meet my nephew at a Clarion Hotel, which is a few blocks away, just over the state line." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she's like, I need to go have a cup of coffee with my nephew to blow off some steam at this fucking hotel. And the cop's like, you know, problem. I'll walk you there. So there's there's footage of her being walked from the scene. Holy shit. By one of the cops to wow. this fucking hotel so she can have a cup of coffee with her nephew. He drops her off there. Then he goes back to dig some more. <laughs> so being a little stinker, what do you think she does? Checks in and goes on a bender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, she rules, but uh, not that... Straight into the mountains, I I hope. She heads down to L.A. Yeah. Okay. All right, so she heads down to fucking L.A. She's chilling down there. And at this point, oh, this is 1988, so n- n- news is more prominent than it was a few right. decades prior. Was that footage of her walking on the street from news or from, like, CCTV? From news. Yeah. You know, so she heads down to L.A. <laughs> and I don't think she's aware of just how big of a news story this is. And... <clears throat> I'm not sure the exact distance, but if Sacramento is like Central California, you know, yeah, she's probably than, yeah, she's probably only a couple hundred miles away. Yeah, so it's like an eight-hour drive, probably. Okay, yeah. So it's still big news down in fucking Southern California. So being a bad bitch, she goes to a bar and gets turned up. <laughs> so and she's old at this point, right? In her sixties, probably. So nineteen eighty. She was born to... in twenty nine. She's like fifty nine. Okay. Yeah. So she heads down to L.A., and she's fucking chilling at a bar, and she's chatting up a dude. She's telling us, I, I, I'm pretty sure, I can't remember this guy, I don't know if this, guy, this guy's name was revealed, but a guy who she drank with, and I'm guessing he probably fucking gave her the pipe, because he figured, he knew what hotel she was staying at, he recognized her from TV. Was she being, like, blasted on TV as a suspect at this point? 
Yes. Okay. Like at this point, by the time she's like, they went back to the fucking hotel to go get her. And Realized like, hey, she fucking you're split a problem. Down. You probably <laughs> yeah. killed all these fucking old ass motherfuckers. Right. So this dude sees that she's a murderer on TV and then goes home and gets fucking cheeks. Well, I think he got the cheeks, drank with her, and then when he got home to watch the news that night, uh-huh. it's like, all right, fucking 59 year old Dorothy Apuente has murdered a thousand fucking people. Jerks off again. Yeah. It's like, Whoa, I had no idea it was going to be that hot. <laughs> so he recognizes her from the TV. He calls the cops. He's like, yo, I just porked this lady, and I know where she's staying. <laughs> Had to let him know I fucking cummed in her. (laughs) You know, I got this pussy hook, line, and sinker. So he calls. He's like, yeah, she's staying at this fucking hotel. My name, Rivers (laughs) Floundermouth. Cops come. They fucking arrest her, man. So this... Were you going to say something, Jake? No, no, no. All right, so they they come and get her. He's laughing at Rivers Floundermouth over there. <laughs> Booty and the Blowfish. <laughs> Actually, one of the victims was found with their hands cut off. So I wonder if she if she was holding their hands. I swear to God, yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> like, what do you mean was holding their hands? It's a Hootie and the Blowfish song, dickhead. I wonder if he said to her that he only wanted to be with her. I want to... What's the Hootie and the Blowfish song? Oh my God! Jesus Christ, John, dude, I'm gonna fucking What's kill the you, actual dude. fucking title of the song? Hold, uh, hold, my, hold hand. my hand. Yeah. yeah. And what did you say? Holding hands. <laughs> I wonder if she was holding the hands. I don't think it lines up, John. <laughs> dude, we can edit this out, but I don't like the joke. <laughs> Jamie, do me a favor. Can you make John a, a creme de menthe? <laughs> the uh, the special bottle. Thank you. All right, dude. So she gets popped. She gets charged with nine murders. All right. Oh, really? Yeah, she gets charged for nine murders. <laughs> Yo, how fucking dumb to those cops that took out that first dead lady <laughs> feel at that point? <laughs> like, Jesus dude. Christ. Could have stopped eight other people from getting murdered. I know, dude. So, and the thing is, like, she doesn't, she doesn't admit to anything. So they just charge her with them. They're oh, like, that's okay. how she only got convicted of three. Yeah, because what happens is they charge her with nine. The trial lasts for a fucking year. The trial doesn't start until 1992. Damn. Yeah. The trial lasts for a fucking year. Dude, is this something you remember from back in the day? No, dude. No. I, had, I had no recollection of this lady until I started fucking dicking around on Google yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And I then, guess, I mean, it probably was big news in California, but it's not like it was fucking O.J. Simpson. You know what I mean? Like, dude, it wouldn't I, be national. I don't know how it wasn't bigger news because I feel like during that time, the first one I remember hearing about was the Night Stalker, and I think he got arrested in 85. That was the first thing that really caught my eye because it was so fucked up. Mm-hmm. And at that point, like shit like that started to appear on my radar pretty, pretty frequently. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't imagine how fuck what a nightmare your Instagram feed is at this point. (laughs) (laughs) Scary clowns and shit. You seeing a serial killer for the first time is like the first time I heard Led Zeppelin. (laughs) Just like it awoken something in me. Yeah, that was my stairway to hell. (laughs) Dude, so she gets charged with, with. nine murders and they're just figuring that like okay um as far as cause of death like so many of the bodies are are just horribly decomposed but they're like all right it was probably a combination one or the other or the combination was more likely was sleeping pills and suffocation because they couldn't really get a toxicology report right from yeah. A, yeah. yeah they were just, the bodies were just so badly decomposed yeah but um what they found was that a lot of the bodies were wrapped in sheets and plastic so that's that's how like they were taken out of the house, and I think she the old Sacramento mummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, dude, I think she is the one that actually drugged them into the spaces, the, yeah, and then just covered them up enough so like a person looking directly down into it couldn't see that there was a fucking dead body there. They right. just saw a little bit of dirt. She was like, you know, can you just fucking fill this shit in for me, Chief? Yeah. All right. And did you, is there any idea how Chief died? Was it poisoning or? They just I assume. don't know. Yeah, I think they just assumed they were all the same. Yeah, was was any of it like uh, they're turning around or they're turned around, back faced, you know, to her, and she hits him over the head or no, like th- there was there was nothing violent about it. Like, yeah, it's very like she's handing the cops the shovels. Like, yeah, I heard that th- this property was built over a burial ground. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I thought it was such a pretty house. Who cares? Puts in fake headstones from like the 1600s. <laughs> Just Halloween adventure fucking. <laughs> yeah. So it takes fucking forever. Like there was a one month deliberation. 
She was charged with nine. She gets, um, there were two first degree murder convictions and one second degree murder conviction. And there was a lone holdout in each. So it got to the point where like, all right, six were off the table. She, she wasn't going to be found guilty of those. And there were three were like, there was a lone holdout. Yeah. So she could have conceivably came relatively close, or not relatively close, but I would say had a shot at getting away with these three that she ultimately got convicted of. Yeah. But eventually they were able to win that fucking dildo over. <laughs> and uh, they got him to fucking, uh, they got him to play the game. So she gets convicted of three, and she's, con- she's sentenced to life without parole. And she was sent to the South- Central California Women's Facility in Chowchilla, California. Which is a very cool place. Cool name for a women's facility. Chow Chilla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, she, so that's 1992, and she survives until March 27, 2011. Damn. So she, she made it fucking... She was 90 years old or 80... Almost 20 years old, yeah. So she ended up t- uh, living to 82. Which is pretty the last good. twenty in prison. Yeah, it's crazy. So pretty wild, bitch. Um, what did I want to? Oh yeah, I wanted to get back to the owners of the house. So Tom and Barbara. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's fucking dead at this point. Everything's been re- well. Oh well, yeah. So she died in two thousand eleven, and then they bought the house in two thousand thirteen. You said. I think they. Or that's when they stopped doing the tour. That's when. That's when I saw the notification that like there was a, a news article which was promoting that event because it became part of like the Sacramento. Historical society. Okay. You know, yeah, they either, embraced it. They did. They went with it. Well, the, I think the historical society did. They embraced it for one, but then uh, Tom and fucking uh, Barbara did as well. Mm-hmm. And, dude, there's a video of them showing this news crew around their house. They're so fucking funny. Mm-hmm. Their shower curtain is like uh, is uh, caution tape. Please caution tape. <laughs> and there's like these weird notices throughout the house, like telling people, like, hey, don't hate the house. Hate the person who fucking did this shit. <laughs> <laughs> just they made their own live laugh life bullshit <laughs> fucking murderer signs <laughs> dude so they bought it uh i'm gonna say 2011 it's a beautiful fucking house. it's a huge fucking house too they bought it for two hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. jesus two years prior to that it was on the market for over half a million dollars so they got what the, in their own words, a killer deal. <laughs> man, they are stinkers. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they're so fucking funny, man. So, um, and now the house is at appraised between six and seven hundred thousand dollars. So they did really fucking well with this investment. Yeah. Uh, one really funny aspect of the house and the fucking, uh, the, uh, the Williamses is that they were the subject of an episode of a Quibi show called Murder House Flip. <laughs> oh my God! Shut up. Yep. Was it called Murder House Flip because you could watch it on your phone in two different <laughs> <laughs> dimensions? <laughs> Probably, dude. So, and what they wanted to do, and I think they just wanted to promote the house more. But in the episode, they said that there was like fucking bad juju in the yard, and they, yeah, they wanted to pimp the yard to have their grandkids over to be able to play. Yeah, but. I've read other articles about them describing the house, and they said they've had no issues, although. Um, Barbara's mother Juanita lives in one of the bedrooms there or lived in one of the bedrooms and they asked her if she had any kind of supernatural experiences and she said on her first weekend in the house she felt a female presence and she smelled heavy perfume Mm. so in her mind like Dorothy Apuente is still fucking chilling in that house I'd live there for that price. I would too, dude. Yeah. Wow. Dude, that's what we should do. Like, if we're able to somehow make any money, we should pull it all together and just try to buy, buy fucking a, murder a apartments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll rent a murder apartment for a yeah. month. Airbnb. Just like, Airbnb. We, oh, my <laughs> fucking God. Edit that out. No one can have that idea for free. <laughs> it's a Patreon idea. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, I feel like somebody's got to be doing that. Well, like, dude, haunted we, yeah. houses. We can just tell people that happened. Like, we'll just rent an apartment in Bath, Ohio. Be like, yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer got butt fucked here. <laughs> <laughs> for an extra $20, Mike will pull you down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, this is another great aspect about this house. So. I'll, I'll put images of this up on the video, but if you want to look it up for yourself, you can see, like, the Trulia and the fucking Zillow shit. It's 1426 F Street in Sacramento, California. Um, 
I don't know if they still have them there, but when they were trying to get people to come pay tickets and buy, come chill at this house, mm-hmm. the Williamses, out front of the house, they had two mannequins. All the time? Yes. That's fucking they scary. They were just on the porch. Uh, one was uh, McGruff the Crime Dog, <laughs> full-sized. How the fuck did they get that? Who do you think the other mannequin was? A clown? Dorothy Puente. So when you drive by this fucking beautiful, horrible house, you see Dorothy Puente and, and, and McGruff a, the Crime and a Dog. humanized so, dog. Yeah. Mike, do you know if the... So the house... It hasn't been like torn down and rebuilt. No, it still looks the same. The only thing that I think has been significantly redone is the yard. Okay. Do you know if like so when she was arrested, did they um like she owned the house? So like right? So like yeah, did she get any that's money? That's a good question. Yeah, like how's that work? I don't know, dude. That's something yeah. that I would like to to find out more about. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine just, like, she fuck? did because like she was she, there was stages where she had gone away for a while and just came right back to it. Okay. So I imagine she did own the fucking place. Yeah. yeah. You know? But like if you get arrested and your life in prison and you're the only owner of the house, then you just forfeit it and the fucking or you cops can auction it off. Yeah. Do they let you like yeah. fucking, I guess your lawyer can be in charge of your... <laughs> you try to sell it. They're like, oh, this is an active crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Oh, there was one yeah, other... Yeah, because they bought it in 2011, the year she died. So yeah. maybe she never sold it. That's what, yeah. Well, yeah. that's what I'm thinking, and like that's why the prices was was hiked to like uh-huh. five hundred thousand. Because she's a greedy bitch till the yeah. day she died. That's my woman you're talking about. So <laughs> fucking watch it, dildo. You got any pictures? Of <laughs> Dude, she looks like an emaciated Mrs. Doubtfire. Fucking hot. Yeah, that's kind of hot. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what if she was just like a single dad that was doing all the murders? <laughs> <laughs> and he just fucking dressed up like an emaciated Mrs. Doubtfire to just go to women's prison? Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, one other thing that I wanted to note about her and about like what we've been doing is there's this cool site that has all this fucking awesome murder memorabilia called Murder Auction. And the guy that runs it is a dude named William Harder. He's the grandson of Dorothy Puente. What? No way. Yeah. At least he claims he is. Weird flex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, when I when I looked him up online, I read a story about him just running a murder auction, and then I, I looked up a picture of him, and the first picture I found was uh, a selfie of him with a Freddy Krueger glove on, <laughs> pointed at the fucking camera. Yeah. So pretty fucking cool, dude. Real life murder. Yeah. Oh, dude, and in regards to murder auction, they have so much fucking weird <coughs> fucked up shit on the site. One of the things is, um, or a, n- a number of the things, are handwritten letters by Dorothy Puente, and I saw one that was only like sixty bucks. Oh, damn. this is why your credit's bad. <laughs> <laughs> wow, sixty dollars for just... what could be anybody's handwriting <laughs> sounds like a steal. Mike, you said uh, that that she was like a, an emaciated Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm-hmm. Do you think that when she like would see her friends and <laughs> drop off this dip, she would say it's a drive-by fruiting? <laughs> <laughs> Probably, Jake. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> it took a while. It's kind of like a there, fishing baby. trip. <laughs> oh, it was a run by fruit thing. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. Let's watch it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The house where Mrs. Doubtfire kind of looks like her house. Dude, I've been really? to that house. The Mrs. Doubtfire house, not the other one. Are there like columns in the front of it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. What were you doing there? It's in San Francisco. It's it's on the same block as the Full House house. Oh, okay. It's like it's the three painted blocks ladies. Down. Oh, it's same a, street. Yeah, same street. It's just like a like a little bit further further down. The yeah, I'd be fun to visit. What's that? It's cool. Yeah, Dolores Park. That's not Dolores Park. Alamo Square. Yeah, yeah, and it's literally like just like half a mile. It just it's downhill. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Easy to walk there. Yeah, hard to get back. Yeah. <laughs> It's a. Day, it's about a twenty minute walk down, <laughs> three day hike up. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have any special murder sites you want to go visit? Oh man. Nah. At this point, I'm like mostly obsessed with meeting OJ while we eat wings. Oh god! Did you Las see Vegas. him on Twitter this week? Yeah. Dude. dude. He's. We. That could be us in the background. I know it will be us, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Eating mozzarella sticks. Yeah. yeah. Dude. I feel like this is the the setup for like a Celtic pride moment, but with O.J. Simpson. 
<laughs> Mark Wait, my words. This we're not movie, kill something you. Yeah, yeah. With is that with Dan Aykroyd? Dan uh, Daniel Dan Stern. Stern. Yeah. Yeah. And they, I think Dan Aykroyd, it's Dan Aykroyd in it too. Or? I think he's the other Celtics guy, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen it. I haven't even heard that movie title since the nineties. Dude, what a great movie! Mm. Let's watch that too. <laughs> put it, Jake, we're put it on. Nineties, yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you guys a hypothetical? Because so you were talking about like how she goes to uh, L.A. She's at another Clarion hotel <laughs> or a bar down there, and then the guy boinks her. And then he sees the <laughs> he sees the news. I love hearing you talk about sex, yeah. dude. <laughs> Let me ask you hypothetically: you see the news first, and you're hitting it off with this chick at the bar at the same time. You know, no strings attached. Like you still you know, gonna hit? You still gonna hit? <laughs> <laughs> if I was not married, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like you wouldn't fear for your life at that moment. I would be terribly excited by that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Dude, I get like that's one thing that I'm learning throughout doing this with you guys. One, it's <laughs> so much fucking fun, but two, I completely get why women marry serial killers. Because <laughs> it, literally every fucking woman that we've covered, it's just like Oh yeah, yeah. I, when dude, the roles are reversed. It's dude, true. Butterflies. I, I got here early and he was jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm jerking off with one hand and working a Ouija board talking to Dorothy up with her with the other. <laughs> you are so hot. <laughs> what about you, John? What would you do? Yes. You would? Yeah, if she's hot. Well, well hot em- murderer. Emaci- emaciated Mrs. Doubtfire. I gotta see a picture. Yeah. Is she wearing... Because I feel like she's dressed as a mum all these years. Yeah. And it's like the fucking she's all that version of like taking off glasses and a ponytail. <laughs> Lee Cook. Yeah, but it's like a giant pair of sunglasses yeah. or like a huge trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> and then like underneath is just this emaciated woman. She just still smells like burnt. Dude, this <laughs> is the, the only <laughs> picture of her you have. It's his background. <laughs> How old is she? This is just I a fucking mum mum, dude. She, she's 38 yeah. years old. <laughs> Oh my god Okay Alright Jesus dude I'm sure she's Is A beautiful her woman in, Back in her hey That day. that was yeah. her on trial And uh In the 90s Did yeah. she know she was on trial That day <laughs> Jake <laughs> You better fucking woke, cool it dude <laughs> just like, woke her up and <laughs> That's A good one It's her in a prison Baseball shirt <laughs> It's wet <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, I think in the prime. I think in prison she really hit her stride. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I see John That's just swiping other. left. <laughs> she looks like Rango, the, Rango. the chameleon. <laughs> I'm so sorry, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to hear this right now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. God damn. <coughs> I can't believe you just said that about my my, my boss, babe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Out of all the bad bitches we've covered, all right, Dorothy Puente, Nanny Doss, and Casey Anthony, how would you rank them in mm-hmm. her terms of there's only been ladies you'd want to be with a picture of one of them relatively young and attractive so i'm gonna put casey first okay and i think dorothy is coming up runner up you're putting nanny doss dead last unfortunately (laughs) i would switch those two yeah Mm. yeah i'd put nanny second she looks like she had some, uh, you this know. This motherfucker's just trying to get some pie. I'm <laughs> dude, I'm, I'm with you, dude. Like, in that book, Cooking with a Serial Killer, there's, like, weird fucking sayings in it, but there's also, there's, like, 50 fucking recipes for shit. And fucking, dude, fucking Dorothy Puente makes her own cat soup. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's get into the uh, the homemade cat dude, soup. Dude, let me, uh, I think. This I, is obviously dude. after Heinz has already patented the word ketchup, right? All right, do you want to hear the ingredients for uh, Dorothea Puente's Chipotle catsup? Yeah. All right, so five pounds ripe tomatoes, 
five pounds of ripe tomatoes, a cup of chopped onion, three jo- three dried chipotle chilies, a tablespoon of fresh cilantro, one and a half tablespoons of fresh marjoram, two thirds a cup of white vinegar, two thirds a cup of sugar, and a teaspoon of salt. Oh my god! Oh no, <laughs> they're probably just being stinkers here. I don't want to say that. What is human blood the last ingredient? No, the last direction is discard remains. <laughs> you mother. What's the third ingredient? Chipotle chilies. Do you like them? Yeah. What's the kind of restaurant that's like fast, casual, it's burritos, tacos? Qdoba? Like Qdoba. Do you know what I'm talking about? I do, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> say it one more time. I'm not. You say it funny. Why? <laughs> Have you only ever, ever read Chipotle? <laughs> I true. refuse to say it the way that people normally say it because I don't think it's correct. No, no, no. Chipotle. You're, no, you're incorrect. I don't believe it. Chipotle? Yeah. Like it's Odele at the end? That's it's, how I'm saying it. Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> no, the mispronunciation is Chipotle. Is it? It sure is. Let me get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, I make fun of the way you pronounce words. Well, I call it Chipotle. <laughs> Dude, I, I want to start calling it Chipotle now. Were you going to let him get away with it? Uh, you know what? I was like, listen, he said that how great of a day he's having. <laughs> you know what? This why is really happening it? at the very end. Yeah. Why, why spoil it's it? It's the best time. So enlighten me, dickhead. How do you say Chipotle? Chipotle. No. Chipotle. Yeah, oh, I, was there a second L in it? Let's have you spell it now. C-H-I-P-O-T-L-E. Chipotle. You said Chipotle. No, I did not. You did. Chipotle. You did say Chipotle, and that's how I Fuck say it, too. both of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only eat a Chi-Chi, so suck my dick. Dude, Darren Dalton used to hang out at the Chi-Chi's in media. There's not oh, a Chi-Chi's no anymore, is there? Smart. No, there was one yeah, by the Grand Rome Mall. Back long the gone. Uh, when, I, when I got out of boot camp, that's the first place I went. <laughs> I felt like a baller. I had like 800 bucks in my bank account, and I treated me and my boy Danny to Chi-Chi's. Chi Chi's awesome. ruled. It was the best, man. I miss it so much. I know, man. Did you guys go in uniform or did you? No. Oh, okay. What did they have there? Because I feel like it was gone so long ago. Fried ice cream. Was it like, uh, did they have like the equivalent of a Ruby Tuesday's salad bar, but like for nachos? Like, yeah, were you able good. to go get your own chips and salsa? It was and, like, like a Chili's competitor, right? No, they were in cahoots, I believe. Oh, they were? Yeah, Chi Chi's and Chili's. Like, Chili's was more the burger. Hmm. Place and then when Chi Chi's stopped, I think they took on a little oh, bit of the Mexican, okay. oh, the Tex Mex esque flavor. I wonder if there's a Chi Chi's. There was a Bennigan's in South Jersey, but it closed during COVID. Oh, God, I love Bennigan's. Dude, do you remember when Bennigan's had, I think it was Tuesday nights, it was half price nachos? No. It was um, at the time when I used to do it, I think it was like 97. I used to go there a lot. And I'm pretty sure it was Tuesday nights. You'd get half price nachos or like two, for, yeah, two for one. Nachos is like the fucking best, biggest Dude, meal. It's two meals. Like you feed two people at least with oh, nachos. No doubt, man. Yeah. And you know what? They they really had it figured out because it was melted cheese, not just fucking cheese sauce on it. Yeah, I can't. So fuck they with were those. really fucking good nachos. Yeah. And I made I made minimum wage at the time, and I had enough to go there and just treat myself every yeah. week. It was the fucking best. I miss yeah. Bennigan so much. I live for half price novelty nights in college. Oh, God, they're the best. Half man. price burger night. It was like Tuesday through Thursday. It was yeah. like, all right, I know where I'm getting dinner. The oh, same yes. place I get dinner every Wednesday. Half price burger night. Dude, I'm convinced that one of the reasons why my wife started giving me regular pussy. <laughs> was that I took her there I think it was our second date She thought you paid full price for nachos <laughs> <laughs> But I told them it was her birthday And it wasn't And they came over and sang the happy birthday song <laughs> Wait, and did you get free dessert? No, I had to pay for it, dickhead Damn But I made a big deal about her Yeah She liked it? Yeah, she loved it, dude Most people hate that, though Well, do you would you do you want that? I would get it. Yeah, yeah. I would. I would like it. You know what? I really enjoy. So even though it's not a free dessert, you just want the people singing to you. I would like that. You one want the th- attention. To that point, one thing that I really enjoyed there was when they'd bring the fucking fajitas out. 
I love oh the attention God. that you would get from oh, ordering fajitas. Oh, yeah. That's fucking gaudier than the birthday yeah. song, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's attention-seeking behavior. <laughs> yeah. Ordering fajitas. There's this restaurant in, uh, it's like a steakhouse in North Carolina. Maybe it's like Raleigh. Mm-hmm. But it's very fancy, very nice. Like, I'm always the fucking worst dressed guy there. You know what I mean? Like, nobody, you don't say. Nobody has an untucked fucking <laughs> golf shirt. You know okay. what I mean? Like, everybody is, it's the event oh. of their week, okay. you know? And uh, if you call to make your reservation and say it's somebody's birthday, they don't even ask, dude. They just bring you a fucking oh. big ass pound cake at the oh, end for that's free. Really sweet. Yeah. Damn. Good deal. I would like that. Yeah, I'm not going to say the name. I don't want to blow their spot up. Or mispronounce oh, it. Go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's the Anus Barn. <laughs> Maybe it's Angus. <laughs> Angus. <laughs> I think it's German. <sighs> I feel All like right. with the, if they sing, they got to get the free dessert. Yeah, it's, that's a good deal. Yeah, but I mean, where was it? Bennigan's? Yeah, Bennigan's on Baltimore Pike. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of people saying it's their birthday. If you see one guy getting a free cupcake, mm-hmm. it's everybody's birthday at it's that point. It's my birthday, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just turned birthday as well. You just turned into the Spartacus <laughs> thing. Just <laughs> I only know that from Cop and a Half. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that is. No way. Burt Reynolds and the little black kid, Cop and a Half? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that. Oh, my God. Devin Butler? I'm Devin Butler. I'm Devin Butler. No. <laughs> Just the best, dude. I know this, the original reference. Looks like we got... Oh, you know the original reference? <laughs> Looks like we got a fucking a triple header dude. <laughs> of three movies to watch. I'm game. You just haven't, have you seen Cop and Half? Yeah, dude. Yes, okay. This fucking I'll watch guy. it tonight. I watched that Tim Robinson thing you told me to watch. Characters? Yeah, Hell very yeah. funny. Yeah. I'll talk to you about it later. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be, can't be repping him on here. <laughs> Boys, we got we got Halloween coming up. You doing anything spooky? No, but I just realized uh, Ed Asner. He was uh, the voice of Dead. Carl and Up. Uh, I almost accidentally called him Dead Asner. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Dead Asner. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, if nobody tweeted that yet, you got to do it. Uh, and I was I was the old guy from Up one year for Halloween. I went out and I like, got a bunch of balloons, tied them to my belt, Aww. printed out a little house at Kinko's, tied Killed it to Killed my wife. <laughs> Killed my wife, got no pussy. <laughs> Made friends with a little boy. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, would you do that again and Jake, would you dress up like that little boy? <laughs> <laughs> I knew yeah. it was coming. Yeah. Yeah, I'd do it. All, All right. right. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> and I'll dress up like Dorothea Poinsett. <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Who's that guy with his own house made ketchup? Yeah. Wait, yeah. does that say catsup? Yeah. Mm, that smells good. Is that Chipotle ketchup? <laughs> yes, it yeah. actually is. He said yeah. it. He said it one more is time. Is there two mannequins on front of his house holding them? <laughs> does this neighborhood ball out for Halloween? Do people go? Yeah, pretty, pretty good. good? Here, yeah. yeah, I like it around here. Uh, to your mannequin point, do you remember the movie Mannequin? Yeah, yeah. Keep control, right? Oh, God, yeah. That. My big thing was, like, pretty early on, I loved any movie that allowed me to get deep into a fantasy of having a girlfriend. And Mannequin, Mannequin was a big one for me. And yeah. the fact that it actually took place in Philadelphia, I was like, this could be me. Yeah. Like, I could be working at this. You felt represent, represented. Yeah. 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 Because of Philadelphia. Is it, it's Daryl Hannah? Is that what you said? No, it's no. Kim Cattrall, Andrew yeah. McCarthy, ah. and uh, what was the guy from Designing Women? Oh, God, I have no idea. I, yeah, I don't know his name. I know. My, was she in the first one or just the second one? Kim Cattrall. Oh, I forgot there was a mannequin. There's too. a mannequin yeah, too. There's two mannequins. I'm thinking of Splash. <laughs> That's Daryl Hannah, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Tom Hanks. I've never seen Mannequin. Yeah, I mean the other movie you could feel represented by was Philadelphia. <laughs> Speaking of Tom Hanks, I had a bad experience with Splash. When uh, when I first got my retainer. I remember, uh-huh. like, it hurts so fucking bad. Yeah. And my mom's like, look, we just spent hundreds of dollars on this fucking thing. You're going to fucking wear it. Yeah. And our couch was catty corner. And I remember, like, hiding behind the couch crying, but, like, my eyes barely <laughs> being above couch level watching fucking Splash. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to see Splash. <laughs> Do 
But I fucking love Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ever seeing Gilmouth. I don't need to see any water related <laughs> content. Turn this shit off. <laughs> Fucking mouse killing me. <laughs> All right, boy, you ready to wrap it up for the evening? Yeah, that was a good one. Another blast as usual. Another bad bitch. Dude, I, I love more than anything covering bad bitches. I like the name Dorothea. It is pretty hot. Yeah. Much, much got a nice little spin off of Dorothy, you know? I don't even know if I mentioned that her, her birth name was uh, Dorothea Gray. Ah. This sounds like a superhero, an old bitch superhero. <laughs> yeah. Supergram. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Oh, the next time we, the next little stinkers we do will be uh, September twelfth, and from that point on, they're going to be weekly. Yes. Yeah. So oh, I'm yeah. looking forward to that, and. All jokes aside, I truly love doing these with you guys. I this is I have so much fucking fun doing yeah, these. Yeah, this is the best part of my week. And so guys, fun. I can't thank you guys for enough for watching and listening to this. Your a big re- your feedback so far has been a big reason why this has been so much fucking fun. And I can't wait to make a million more of these. Thanks, guys. See you love next you guys. time. See you in a couple weeks. Yeah.